Okay, welcome back YouTube. It's Wolf190D here with a, another, uh, actually an update pretty much to my previous video on the um, the Rend Brawling Barbarian. Uh, I, I kind of, and I don't know about the rest of you, but I I was kind of starting to get stuck, um, especially with, with larger crowd fights and stuff like that with the Rend Brawl. So I finally went ahead and swapped him over into a whirlwind barb now i'm going to go over my skills here momentarily but let me see if i can't run through a little bit of this dungeon first for you and kind of give you an idea of the i think improved combat performance oh boy what do i have to do open up each one of those little cells yeah probably okay so let's go ahead and get to it all right, so yeah, he does have at least early issues or small group issues dealing with um, dealing with uh, people using the strictly the whirlwind, but as you stack abilities, and plus you'll also notice if you didn't notice you'll also see that i am using the death blow with it now the reason for that yes um the the damage stack or the uh, the, the bonus stack is only uh 20 fury if you damage at least one enemy but remember the nice thing about the death blow is is that if it kills an enemy the cooldown gets reset so if you're in a group of smallies and you need to regenerate a good bit of that fury what you're gonna want to do is stop whirlwinding and actually just mash two or three of the uh, of the smaller groups of the small uh, of the smaller guys and more often than not I've noticed that you'll take out several of them at once you can take out several of them at once and then of course just get your fury back up and whirlwind around and around and around on the big guy uh, watch out for that. Yeah, he almost got me there, didn't he? But nonetheless, um, it's kind of one of the challenges, perhaps, about barbarians is that, well, well, they're, I don't know, it requires you to pay attention to a lot. It's not like you're hanging back and you're able to avoid damage and stuff like that. You have to pay attention to where the, uh, where the archers are. All that other stuff. But I'm going to come back to town real quick and sort of show you guys what's going on here. So four, uh, four stats. As I've said, pretty much the same as with the Rend, uh, the, the Rend Brawl Barbarian that I had, that I had in, uh, in my previous video. I'm going to go with Lunging Strike all the way up to Combat Lunging Strike. Just one point in each of those. Max out your Whirlwind, of course. Enhanced Whirlwind for sure. And what I'm doing actually is Violent Whirlwind. Now the reason for that is, is that because I've unlocked my technique and I've put two-handed sword expertise in there. Okay, this is going to give you base bleed damage. And the base bleed damage is going to stack very, very nicely with this hamstring ability, which of course then when you get into No Mercy, when I eventually have enough points to invest in No Mercy, it's going to give you 9% increased critical strike chance against immobilized, stunned, or slowed enemies. Boom. That's, uh, that's always pretty tasty. Um, you can see my Warcry passives are almost pretty much maxed out. Uh, the booming voice increases the duration. The guttural yell is going to reduce damage that, uh, from you. And then, of course, Raid Leader is going to give you a bump. And your allies. That's the nice thing about Barbarians. If you're running in a party, then the, uh, the shouts are going to last longer. The effects are going to last longer. Um, still with the Rallying Cry, still with the War Cry. One point into the War Cry tree because it's just there for extra damage. Also to grant Berserking, and I'm going to get into that here momentarily. And the rallying cry, of course, is going to be maxed out because this is the this this is going to allow you to simply, I mean, just massively, not simply, massively ramp up your resource generation while you are whirlwinding. So you get 60% generation with the tactical rallying cry. You get another 20%. You're looking at 80% resource generation just off the war cry alone. Plus, you get to be unstoppable while it's active. That's also very nice. No more freezes. No more stuns. Blah de blah de blah. And of course, the Whirlwind itself is going to gain one Fury uh, to an enemy and four for every Elite. So 
you can go ahead and do the math on that or not. Just take my word for it. Once you and I waited until about so the rend brawl barb. I wait. I ran that until about level 40, 42, somewhere in there, and uh, respect because I was starting to run into problems. I also got off of Call of the Ancients and put him onto Wrath of the Berserker. Um, the reason for that Berserk, well, you get Berserk and Unstoppable off of Wrath of the Berserker. The Berserking ability is going to give you increased damage and movement speed, but also when you get Supreme Wrath of the Ber Berserker, every 50 Fury you spend increases Berserk's damage bonus by 25%. Okay, so this is where uh, you get into specifics. Um, whirlwind costs 25 per second, so basically every two seconds, and guess what? After two seconds, your whirlwind damage gets bumped another 30 percent. So if you pop Wrath of the Berserker and you start whirlwinding into a crowd of guys, two seconds later you're doing 30 plus another additional 25 percent, so that's 50 percent total, right? 50, 30, yeah, you're looking at a massive damage increase. Um, and also, also what I do highly recommend at some point is getting the Invigorating Fury. One point to Tempered Fury for now. I'm going to max this out before I worry about this simply because 9% maximum life that you recover for each 100 Fury spent. So while you're ramping up all of this, uh, this whirlwind damage and generating whirlwind damage, if you can do this thing five, six, seven, eight seconds, um, consecutively, you're talking about all kinds of damage, all kinds of li uh, life bump. Okay, and also I am going with unconstrained. I am still a little leery about unbridled rage, simply because it, it's a hundred percent more fury on the cost. Yes, it does more damage. Okay, I might fool around with that later once I start getting into Paragon. But for now, I'm going to keep with Unconstrained. Why? Because any time you Berserk, the max duration is increased by 5 seconds and its damage bonus by another 25%. So, uh, let's go back to this Wrath of the Berserker thing because, alright, 25%, another 25% that you're getting off of it uh, for every um, 50 Fury you spend while this is active. Plus, that 5 second increase with another 25, you're looking at 75% right there. Couple in the 30% increased damage while, as long as you're keeping this whirlwind going, that's 105%. It's, it's double damage. It's over double damage. Wham. How about that? All right. So, uh, the combat skill, I actually am, am still sort of contemplating going back to leap and using the, uh, the power leap. 40 fury per set, uh, 40 fury per um, per jump. I'm really not sure about that now, though, because I got to thinking about it. Okay, fighter's death blow generates 20 fury per enemy hit. But again, as I said, if you can ramp this three, four times consecutively, you're talking about that much more fury, up to 80, up to 80 fury, real, real quick. And again, if you mess up. And this is what I like about this combination. If you mess up with the death blow, okay, if you can at least get a half a fury bar out of it, you mess up, uh, you target the wrong enemy, it doesn't kill them, you're still getting that fury. Then you can go back into whirlwind. Whirlwind around for a little while. Um, especially if you start getting your, your timings and stuff right. If you, if, if you do that, you go into whirlwind, activate your rallying cry, you're generating a um, a bunch of fury as you're just spinning around and around and around and around. So you get that. And then Death Blow opens back up. Hey, I'm out of fury now because War Cry's over, whatever. Um, slap a couple more of the, the little cheesy guys with this thing. You ramp up some more fury, go back to Whirlwind. Whirlwind is great. You don't, and I really don't think you need Leap for the Whirlwind ability because Whirlwind does give you that ability to slip through large crowds all the while dealing damage. So leap isn't as much of a necessity. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with this for a while. I came off of rupture and I still have a piece of gear that gives gives to rupture, but whatever. Um, come back to that. Uh, may, might come back to that. I don't know that cut to the bone is going to be as necessary um, with this build because 
Yeah, you're doing a little bit of bleed damage, and that's going to come off of the that's going to come off of the um, the expertise once again the the two-handed sword expertise. But it's just a little bit. It's not massive, like uh, like with the the Ren Brawl build. All right. Now, as far as equipment, um, some things that choice items kind of that I have come across. This is actually kind of nice right now. Anyway, uh, Whirlwind leaves behind Dust Devils that deal 352 damage to surrounding enemies, and they almost kind of track a little bit. It seems like they, um, they, they do sort of try to pull back in towards wherever the opponents are. That is kind of nice. I do like that. Uh, and these boots also, uh, I, I don't know that they're the greatest, but they do help. Um, I, I, I'm uh, sorry that they don't have the extra chance or the extra charge, rather, to evade or the uh, the evade cooldown. If you can find boots that give evade cooldown, those are actually really nice. I, I think I actually like those better than the extra evade charge overall, though both of them work really well. Um, and, and the uh, evade cooldown is actually on all damage. So, you know, any damage you're doing is going to reduce the evade cooldown. Hey, it's pretty nice. But the lucky hit bit of this is really nice damaging an enemy with a core skill has up to a 38% chance to extend the duration of berserking by one second. Double this duration if it was a critical strike. Okay, maybe not the greatest piece out there, but it's still kind of nice. Um, tips and other things that I'm picking up on yeah the best thing to put in your jewelry is going to be the skulls in a barbarian simply because hey more armor more damage mitigation right now I'm only at 36 percent but it's probably because my gear is starting to get a little bit more dated um, in the armor pieces I tend to like to stick the uh, the rubies in there max life obviously more life on a barbarian more damage he can take uh, not to mention um, for other barbarian builds, I do believe there are things that's, that uh, build off of base level life. So there is that thought too. Um, since I have gone over to the Whirlwind, I have started putting emeralds as opposed to amethysts. All right. Now, if you're sticking with the bleed build, amethysts are great. And I've, I've toyed around with, with both of these actually on the bleed build. Amethysts are great because they increase damage uh, done over time. Okay. The other thing you could do, I think, if I'm reading this uh, correctly in the other uh, stats and stuff, is the other thing you could do is use um, physical damage over time bumps because bleeding damage is physical damage over time. So it actually it actually fits into two got two different things will affect it, All right? Uh, and that's pretty much it for right now. Uh, random rupture. I'm not using this. So obviously, these gloves are out of date. I just recently respect this guy to whirlwind, and I haven't found equipment that's uh, that's going to serve me better. Um, so, uh, lunging strike still a really good option. Again, gives you increased mobility. Uh, though at this point. You know, it, it, it's another thought, and I've seen other guys, uh, other guys do this. That it's it's also worth considering is switching over the lunging strike to the frenzy ability. Now, the reason for that, and it's you know, again, these these are all different ways. It's going to depend on your play style. Um, you could and, and see the reason I got the lunging strike was is because it it gives berserking. Okay, berserking for one and a half seconds, but remember, unconstrained, another five seconds every time berserk pops. Boom. Okay, in Berserk, increased damage, increased movement speed, all things that are going to help while you're whirlwinding. The other thing to consider, though, is Frenzy. Um, and one point into each Frenzy, okay, how much are you going to use it? I don't know. It doesn't generate as much fury. Okay, maybe that's not the end of the world because with this Death Blow ability, like I said, if you... If you get the hang of utilizing the death blow, you can ramp up a lot of fury in a very, very short amount of time. Okay, so generating frenzy with your base attack might not be the most important thing now. And the other two things to consider with frenzy, all right, while berserking, other skills gain 5% attack speed for each stack of frenzy you have. That means potentially your whirlwind could get another 15% uh, attack speed. I do believe frenzy stacks three times. Um, if there's equipment out there that, that improves this, hey, let me know. Uh, I, I'd love to be able to keep my eyes out, uh, eyes peeled for it. But the other nice thing, again, is, is that damage reduction. All right, 8% damage reduction for each stack of frenzy you currently have. Again, 3 times 8, that makes 24% damage reduction, at least for a very brief time, that you're uh, whirlwinding through those large crowds of enemies. 
All right, so all things to consider. Endless Fury, I've gotten away from this. Um, I'm going to get back into Pressure Point at some point. Okay, at some point I'm going to get into that. But right now, I've really been focusing on damage reduction and healability. And of course, resource generation. Resource generation is going to be the biggest thing for, uh, for Whirlwind Barb. And that's why I do not recommend trying to go for this build from the get-go. I would recommend checking out my other video, the, uh, uh, the one on the rend brawl barbarian because that did serve me very well again you know it's not a bad build and you can even turn that into an end game build either way that's that's kind of the nice thing about the barbarian there's a lot of options he's a very he, he can be a very tough character i'm not going to lie i've run into instances where it seems like i get one shot by some of the bosses but there again it's part of the reason why i took that um that Ren Brawl Barbarian, and I respect him into this Whirlwind Deathblow Barbarian. Uh, and maybe that's what I'll call him. He's a Whirlwind Deathblow Barbarian. And again, um, I, I'm also toying around with some thoughts on other Barbarian ideas. I'm going to give them a try first and, and sort of show you guys what they can do, maybe, uh, <laughs> before I go ahead and, uh, and spill the beans on that one. So anyway, all things to consider. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And... Be sure to like and subscribe. Please, please, please like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Keep this channel going. Uh, and also, I would like to interact more with the D2 community out there. So if you have any contrary thoughts, any, any conflicting thoughts or ideas, please leave a comment. We can get a discussion going. Informa more information is always better. So, as always, YouTube, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the subscriptions. And I will see you next time.